All right, let's take a quick look at party politics in America. First thing you need to know is the two-party system. There are two major parties in the United States, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And when you talk about the people within them, you call them Democrats or Republicans. Uh, the elephant is basically the logo for the uh, Republican Party, and the donkey was previously used, actually still used sometimes, for the Democratic Party, uh, even though they're formal logo today has only this D in it. Uh, the GOP is uh, another more informal name for the Republican Party. It stands for Grand Old Party, uh, but it, it's formally called the Republican Party. Uh, every election in America is basically a contest between candidates from the Democratic Party, and a candidate from the Democratic Party, and one candidate from the Republican Party. And here you see some colors, by the way, the color codings here. Uh, in this system, blue is the color of the Democrats, and red is the color of the Republicans. But first, a candidate must defeat another of the same party in a primary election. In other words, he, uh, if you want to you know, go run for office uh, for on this party ticket, you must first per perhaps defeat someone else who wants to do it uh, at the same time for the same party, uh, and, and that's called a primary election. So everything is very contest-based here, uh, and very is typical of American individualism, really. Uh, and in prime elections, it's very typical that only party members can vote, but it, it varies. So, uh, so all of these uh, these congressmen and these senators, uh, not necessarily all, but a lot of them first had to defeat uh, an opponent from within the same party as him, and then uh, defeat the Republican or Democratic, the uh, opposite uh, opponent from the opposite party. The parties don't have strict leadership. And what I mean by that is uh, to uh, tell you that in most of the world, political parties have a leader, and that leader is really the leader. Uh, that leader had, will will lead the party and take uh, major positions in government, but these parties do not. Uh, and and what I just told you about having primary elections and having to run against people uh, in your own party uh, that's strange in in most countries where they have a party hierarchy and a leadership that basically vets candidates itself and chooses uh, who runs against who. Uh, from another party. So, in other words, Barack Obama has never been the leader and is not the leader of the Democratic Party. And this other person is, this is uh, Mitt Romney, was the presidential candidate for the, uh, the Republicans in uh, 2012. He lost, of course, it was Obama's re-election. And here are some logos, by the way. Uh, this, is, this is kind of Obama's logo from his presidential race, and this was the Romney's logo, Mitt Romney's logo. Third-party candidates can run for office and often have no party, but this, they still, they're still often called third-party candidates, uh, meaning they're not affiliated with the, these two other ones. Uh, if they have no party, they're called independents. And this map, this uh, shows you uh, from probably the 2012 uh, senatorial election, uh, the uh, Senate uh, seats that were elected then. It's not all of them because they have six-year terms. But uh, these, the ones that are not either blue or uh, red, uh, these are independents. And those are the two gray ones here. So two senators uh, from 2012 did not belong to uh, any political party called independents. Uh, the U.S. has a two-party system, by the way, by practice, not by law, and this is from the, t uh, the 1912 election, presidential election, where uh, Theodore Roosevelt, a former president, ran on a third-party ticket with his own party and came in second. So there's nothing against uh, uh, other political parties uh, gaining ground, it's just that it's very, very difficult. American liberalism and conservatism, those are sort of the ideologies that you need to know about. Both parties have people who identify as liberal, moderate, or conservative, although liberals are mostly associated with Democrats and conservatives with Republicans, as these stats will show. Uh, typical liberal positions would include support for government spending, 
uh, for instance, welfare, uh, regulation, and being open to same-sex marriage, and being pro-choice, uh, that's uh, for uh, the abortion issue, uh, being in favor of a woman's right to choose to have an abortion. Whereas a typical conservative positions would include uh, being in favor of, a, a favor of less government spending and uh, in favor of deregulation and traditional marriage, being you know, not open to same-sex marriage, and being pro-life, uh, you know, being against abortion rights, and being pro-gun rights. Uh, this is just some. Uh, you, c there are conservatives who don't have to agree with all of these positions. It's just that these are all typical conservative positions. Uh, some media personalities are famous uh, exponents of liberalism or conservatism. For instance, Bill O'Reilly, uh, the man on the right here, uh, uh, basically a, a news pundit uh, from F uh, the network Fox News. Uh, John Stewart had his uh, The Daily Show, uh, one a conservative, one a liberal, and uh, many uh, media people will identify as one or the other and maybe meet for debates like these two did. American party politics before 1900, just a very short, very simplistic primer here. Uh, political parties did not exist when the Constitution was written, uh, just so you know that. They came later. Uh, however, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, you know, the first presidents, uh, they, they still might... Uh, might have identified as sort of having a position, a political position, uh, reminiscent of a political party, even though political parties did not exist, and federalists like George Washington, although more so his vice president, John Adams, and that was one sort of faction, and the other one was the Democratic Republicans, strange name really, uh, <laughs> uh, given what we know of, of which political party we have today, but uh, nevertheless, Democratic Republicans, represented by Thomas Jefferson, uh, the Federalists, more in favor of the federal government, Democratic Republicans, like Thomas Jefferson, more in favor of states' rights. Uh, so, Jeffersonian democracy is a word uh, favoring agrarian populism, meaning like for, for the farmer, and decentralization of power, again, like more states' rights thinking. Andrew Jackson, who was once, uh, who also became a, a president, uh, founded the Democratic Party in 1828, which at that time favored laissez-faire liberalism. Laissez-faire, it's a French term. Uh, this is not like liberalism today. This is, has more in common with conservatism today. Uh, laissez-faire liberalism, it's economic liberalism. It's being in favor of deregulation and free trade. Anyway, this uh, president had his uh, face on the $20 bill. Uh, but again, this is the man who founded the Democratic Party, even though it has changed a lot. The Republican Party was founded in 1854, and its first president was Abraham Lincoln. And this party was in favor of protectionism, not laissez-faire liberalism, not uh, free trade, but protectionism, and modernization, more government uh, spending in, in investment, and also, of course, abolitionism, being uh, in, uh, against slavery, uh, for, uh, in favor of abolishing slavery which means sort of against some states' rights, because slavery used to be a states' rights issue. And uh, since 1900, just a few things here. The Progressive Era is what we call this period uh, around 1900, 1910, uh, about those years, uh, maybe to 1920 as well. Theodore Roosevelt who was a Republican, and Woodrow Wilson who was a Democrat. They both supported regulation and social legislation. Meaning, uh, not 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 really a welfare state yet, but uh, supporting some measures to help uh, poor people, you might say. Uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, not related to Theodore Roosevelt, uh, is famous for his New Deal coalition, uh, which was huge, uh, a coalition with the segregationist South, the southern states were segregationist, they, uh, meaning uh, segregation between whites and blacks, right, until 1964. Uh, that's when uh, the New Deal coalition uh, broke away. These, the South uh, more went to the Republicans instead of the Democrats. Uh, the South had been democratic during, you know, the Civil War, uh, since Abraham Lincoln was a Republican who represented the Union of the Northern States. Uh, anyway, uh, moderate Republicans uh, dominated the party, uh, the Republican Party, 
in the interwar, sorry, the post-war years with Dwight David Eisenhower, who was president, a former World War II veteran, and Nelson Rockefeller, who was vice president to Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon uh, was himself vice president to uh, Dwight David Eisenhower. So these were moderate Republicans, whereas uh, you have some conservative candidates like Barry Goldwater, who lost in 1964 to Lyndon B. Johnson, while Ronald Reagan, also conservative, won against uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Carter in 1980. You can tell by these electoral maps uh, how uh, Goldwater's loss was tremendous in 1964. Uh, Reagan's win was tremendous in 1980. The conservative wing has grown while the word liberal has become a pejorative, meaning sort of a dirty word. Uh, that happened uh, basically around 1990, you might say. Uh, some examples of party politics here, uh, you need to know what a divided government is, because keep in mind, you could have a president of one party and a Congress dominated by the other party. And when you have that, that, that means you have divided government. If you are to have legislation passed, it must be passed through what is called bipartisanship. That means uh, both parties have to agree on something in order to pass it because Congress can wa could want one thing. Uh, in order to have it passed, president must agree and, and then you know, sign it. And obviously, we have divided government under most of uh, Barack Obama's tenure. Uh, Republicans have controlled uh, at least the House of Representatives most of the time and also uh, the Senate for the latter, the latter years. Uh, the Tea Party movement, uh, this is just an example of party politics here, Tea Party movement, which came about after Obama won his first election, uh, represents the most conservative Republicans, basically, the most anti Obama Republicans at that time. Uh, Bernie Sanders is a completely different uh, figure uh, who, who is, has been an independent politician, basically the most successful independent in American political history, uh, who uh, has called himself a democratic socialist, which is really kind of a dirty word, has been a dirty word for quite some time in America, uh, uh, but he has done it nonetheless, and he, he has been a congressman and a senator, and of course uh, tried to run for president in 2016. It doesn't look like he'll win, by the way. Uh, it will be probably be uh, Hillary Clinton who's beating him in this Democratic primary, uh, possibly, at least, and, uh, and then she will go on to face the Republican candidate who was uh, who will would have won uh, their primary uh, some more examples here a legalized marijuana and abortion and same-sex marriage and gun control these are very typical partisan issues where uh, most Democrats and Republicans probably don't uh, view it the same way, or at least liberals and conservatives, I should say, uh, take very different positions, uh, while something like capital punishment, for instance, is less of a partisan issue, I would say. But in, it, in, either, uh, in any case, uh, most of these issues are very states' rights sort of things, so the states' issues, and that's why you have many states where uh, marijuana is not legalized, and you have states where it is, and you have states that have banned the, the death penalty and other states that have not. So it's kind of a state's issue. Uh, the federal government uh, generally doesn't uh, deal with many of those things. Although the uh, U.S. Supreme Court can do and has done, and for instance, 2015, the uh, Supreme Court decided that same-sex marriage will be legal for all the states. Libertarians, uh, that's a different kind of party, uh, Libertarian Party, but this person, that's Ron Paul, who has uh, tried to run for president several times on the Republican ticket, uh, probably a few times on the Libertarian Party ticket as well. Uh, libertarians are the ones that want both small government, meaning less government spending and lower taxes, etc., but also freedom of choice, and therefore generally positive to uh, stuff like abortion and same-sex marriage and mar legalized marijuana. Uh, and therefore, you know, they're kind of conservative on one thing and, and liberal on the other. Uh, anyway, that's the libertarians. And just a, a final thing here, uh, note that in America is kind of well known for its very, very low voter turnout with less than 60% generally 
less than 60% of the popul voting population uh, participating in presidential elections, which are the most popular, and less than 40 in the midterm elections, which are two years after the presidential election. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you'll catch my other videos as well.